Okay, today we're going to do a spot of mono printing. As you can see, we've got a small amount of uh, printing ink here. Just dabble it slightly on here. Just to see if we've got the right amount because uh, we don't want too much. The problem with mono printing is we have too much ink, it tends to uh, not stay on the surface, it's the surface too thick. So, what we're going to do is just gradually a really thin layer on here. You can see I'm just hardly using any. The problem with students is that they use too much and you get big lumpy parts of the ink coming out which is very undesirable because it leads to an inconsistent surface. You've got darker tones where you don't want them, you've got pieces of uh, ink showing in dip dips where you don't need it. So what I'm going to do is even out the surface. You can see it's almost the thinnest possible distribution. You can see that would just about be fine here. We'll take that away, okay, and what we're going to do next, now we've got that surface produced, just let it take it away a little bit, it kind of dry out, and then we're going to Look at the drawing that I produce of a football beam right in there. As you can see, I've used different types of mark making, which I found on the sheet here. Uh, you can go in there and look at scribbled, ragged. We can look at uh, other marks like broken, continuous. If we go right down uh, here, we can find some directional ones there. You can see which. Uh, direction ones can be used, don't have to be, but they're just different sorts of marks you can produce on your monoprint. Now what we're going to do is beam in again, beam slightly out, sorry, and then you can see some of the marks I've used on the football there, some dots in the background, uh, some diagonal marks on the football itself. So what we're going to do is now transfer the football onto the monoprint and see here, Take it nice and slowly here, make sure that the ball is on there completely and start to draw through some of the actual marks we've created. So we can look to produce the outline here and what's going to happen is that the actual marks themselves are going to come through on the other side because we're pressing down with the viral here on the pre-drawing which will mean that the ink underneath is going to be pushed onto the paper under here. So what I'm going to do is go around this area here, the football, and I'm going to shade that in quite dark. And this hopefully should come out on the other side. Can check to see the progress at all times by lifting the paper up to see the marks come out. I'm not going to do that at the moment. Uh, just going to again look at different types of marks. These are small little dashes here and if you're really clever you can look at producing darker marks uh, near the centre of the football and lighter marks like for instance over here, as they go away, not pressing so hard so it looks like you're following darker here you can see, and then lighter, so you're following the actual perspective. Same over here, dark, dark, lighter, lighter, lighter. So gradually, same with these marks here, light, a little bit darker because they're getting near to you, a little bit darker and lighter as they go away, following obviously the contour lines, construction lines which we've been taught. Same here. We don't need to press so much onto this part and here because it's actually going away from the centre. The centre is the part which is predominantly the part where the darkest tones are going to be. And again on here, again 
quite dark in this part of the football. This stage we can kind of uh, look at making it the same as that. Possibly a bit darker there. Use some squibble marks here. And again, if you're looking here, these little dentations, slightly getting lighter here as we go away. Same here. And obviously, as we did with the other part of the ball, as it's equidistant, we're just going to use some directional marks there. The lighter marks here. Just have a quick look to see what's happening underneath. And yep, it's beginning to stop forming now. So, all artists who did one of the prints, Tracy Emin, Degar, etc., and Paul Clay, would use different types of mark making to denote form. sure that you don't miss out on any of the marks. We know that the football obviously is registered here, I mean that the ink is holding it down but you've got to be careful that all the marks you put down, and I did some small dots at the back here, just show distance because the dots in a sense will come out. We're just trying to fill out that composition here, as Jim Dime would have done in his work, getting rid of any negative space. And for the remainder of the demo, I'm going to be using different types of marks, stronger in some areas not being scared to block in certain areas. And then what I'm going to do at the end is to take away and reveal the actual monoprint itself. I mean, this is a lower ability task. Some of the boys who struggle can use more simplified objects like football the boys who are stronger would be doing other objects like cars for instance or even football boots which are quite complex and as i say before we are following three-dimensional form these lines which go right around which have been taught the contour lines are been adhered to here as you can see here so there's three-dimensional depth, as well as using the marks, using the direction of the console lines. Okay, and as you can see, the football has been created. It's quite a nice monoprint there, and that's the end of the demo.